SAFE Software is pleased to present the 2009 FME International User Conference. This session is presented by Christian Damon of Conterra GmbH. Christian first started using FME four years ago when he dealt with an implementation of a prototype writer for City GML documents. At Conterra, Christian is responsible for some FME training courses and his specialization is in 3D, XML, GML and Python. So, Christian, thank you, Masa. Yes. You. Welcome, everybody, um, to my presentation on FME and CityGML, generating 3D city models in a variety of applications. So, just before I getting started, a short overview about what I want to talk to you t uh, tomorrow. And uh, it's just an introduction and a motivation. Then uh, we have a look on the key form at CityGML, which is an OGC standard since uh, for about since uh, for one, one a year. Then um, I will show you a short, uh, uh, some short slides about the EU environmental noise directive uh, from 2002, uh, which, uh, where, is, uh, where city GML is already used uh, to calculate some noise uh, pollution maps. And uh, in the second part, um, which, we, which will, build, will be more practical, um, we uh, have a look on FME 2009 and CityGML, what you can do with FME. And uh, I will end up with two um, demonstration or workbench projects just to show how it works to generate CityGML models. So an increasing number of cities and companies are building virtual 3D city models. And uh, they all do it for different application areas, some for urban planning, for disaster management, for navigation, or just for environmental simulations. And uh, what they all have in common, or what they, are, yeah, what they all have in common, is there's a growing need for semantic models. That means more than just visual, visual, visualization, sorry. And um, so um, you have to model all relevant objects in urban space. And um, just to see some of uh, the application areas, it's disaster management, for example, radio network planning. So the one with noise I will present um, later on. Um, police simulator, business development, tourism, navigation, and so on, urban planning, facility management, um, for example. Um, so what uh, graphical or geometric models like KML or VML have, um, have all in common, they are a bit limited to visual, visualization purposes. So the intent is um, visualization, um, but not um, semantics. And um, semantics is so the main topic, um, the main part of CTGML, as we see um, later on. So um, there's a need of a more general modeling approach, satisfying the semantic and the topological aspects. So you can solve um, thematic queries like where can I find a building with uh, two um, stories or analyzes like uh, what is the sol uh, solar potential of each um, building of each roof surface of each wall surface or even spatial data mining and another point is reusability so just create one city GML model um, and use it for different purposes so the effect is cost reduction So in the format, um, you can do all these topics is uh, CityGML, it's a data model and an exchange format for virtual 3D city models. Um, you can model all relevant parts of a virtual 3D city according to the semantics, the geometry, the topology and appearance. So just some technical backgrounds. It's a GML 3.1.1 application schema, so it's XML-based and human-readable. So maybe you have a look on it later on. And CityGML is, or CityGML 1.0 is an OGC, OGC standard since 2008. So jump, just some historical facts about CityGML. It's developed since 2002 by the Spatial Interest Group um, 3D. In, which is located in Northern Westphalia, Germany. It's the place where Cotera, uh, the Contera department is also um, located. There are members from above 70 companies 
municipalities and research institutions working all together to bring this city GML format um, on top. So the lead managed is done by Professor Thomas Kolbe from uh, the Technical University of Berlin. Maybe someone heard of him before. And Dr. Gerhard Kröger from the University, University of Bonn, which is um, the center of city GML stuff, I think. So just to introduce the city, the city GML format, some basic characteristics. Um, one of the key characteristics is modularization. So there's a thematic model covering all um, different types of what you can, or, 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 different um, uh, entities you can have in a city G GML model or in a city model. Um, it's buildings, roads, city furniture, um, vegetation objects, and on and so on. And a second very um, important characteristic um, is the coherence of semantics and geometry. That means there's an explicit relation between uh, semantic object and semantic entity and its related um, geometrical representation. So if you have a semantic object, for example, a building, you have a corresponding geometry, for example, a solid or a surface. And even if it's getting more complex, you have one building consists of building parts, and every building part consists of roof surfaces, wall surfaces, windows, doors, and, uh, and so on. And as you can see here, um, if you have a building, you have a composite solid, which made of this building, building parts, which are solids, and so on. And uh, yeah, if you have roof surfaces, you have a polygon, and so on and so on. So there is a coherence, a link between um, the semantics and the geometry. Further characteristics, it's multi-scale modeling. So you have, or you can have different level of details in each model. Um, and that's, um, yeah, it's from landscape model, just LOD0 to LOD4, LOD LOD um, like interior, interior models. And uh, we will see later on in the, my um, example um, that you can just put different LODs into one CDGML model. So further characteristics just known here are, for example, external references, to, so you can uh, define links to external data sources which contains uh, additional data. You can have um, uh, appearances like textures, which is not supported yet in, uh, in FME, but it will come um, in uh, 2010 for reading CTGML and later on hopefully for the writing um, of CTGML documents. Another characteristic is the, the application domain extension. That's a module or a kind of modularization where you can add special information, for example, noise information. So we will see it um, later on in the, in the example about the URI, uh, EU uh, inventory model um, noise uh, project. So and uh, last but not least, generic city objects and attributes for all parts of a city which are not um, already implemented um, in the model, in the city GML model. So just um, to have a short example, uh, we have a building example, just an easy building with wall surfaces and roof surfaces and even with a ground surface. And um, if we have a look on the, light, on the left side, um, we see how it is defined in XML, in GML. We have a city model as a root node, so all objects um, belonging to one city model and all objects into that um, city model are city object members. For example, a building, um, which is made of ground surfaces, surface uh, and roof surface and so on. And later on, I will show you how to define or how to set up uh, a workbench file um, to yeah, just um, say, okay, this ground surface here belongs to this building and so on. So just uh, as mentioned before, um, just an example on how to use CTGML. Um, it's a UU, EU Inventable Noise Director from 2002 um, that had the goal to minimize um, noise emission and to um, 
to calculate um, the actual noise pollution, um, they have to calculate um, so-called noise emission maps. And um, it's, so it's a kind of law, so every state in, German, uh, in, in Europe um, has to uh, has to calculate this uh, this, this data, and uh, they do it in a, or they have to do it in a five years iteration statewide. And you can imagine there's a great that there's the great amount a multitude of 3D geodata. So in in Northern Westphalia they do it with uh, the city GML noise application domain extension. So they added special um, uh, attributes, special objects to the standard city GML model. Um, like road segments, noise attributes, noise barriers, and so on, and we will we'll see it um, just in a few seconds. So just two pictures. Um, on the left-hand side, you have the city model with um, all the, uh, which is the base for the calculation of the noise emission maps. That means that all the buildings um, have special attributes uh, for the noise pollution uh, calculation. And um, then they produce maps uh, from it, and um, which has to be um, reported to the EU leader government. And just to see um, how the attributes affects the city model, for example, we have a city furniture with all uh, standard uh, attributes, function, LOD1 geometry, and so on, and special attributes coming from this noise um, application domain extension. So let's come to a more practical side of my presentation. Um, what can you do actually with, with FME 2009 and CityGML? There's a reader and a writer for CityGML 0.4 and um, 1.0. Um, what is the main or what is very important is that FME feature types represent the thematic model. So if you want to create a building, you have to create um, a feature type called building and so on. So it's the same for roof surfaces and ground surface and so on. Then um, we will have a look on uh, multiple geometries through FME geometry traits. So um, the geometry traits setter and fetchers are very new transformers in FME and we make use of it to, to, um, yeah, to say and uh, to, to, to assign um, a special um, road, or, uh, sorry, a special um, Sorry, I lost it. <laughs> so to assign um, special um, information to geometries. And uh, what we also will see is um, how to define the theoretical relationships through um, roles and IDs. So if you have a building bounded by walls, openings, windows, you have to define three feature types, building, walls, and windows, and you have um, explain what is the relation between all um, the three um, feature types. So just to see it here, we have the model from the very beginning of my uh, presentation. And as you can see here, we have to define one feature type for the city model, one for the building, one for the ground surface, and so on. So just model entities by FME feature types. Build relationship through GML ID and GML parent ID. So every ground surface has to know to which buildings it belongs. And that's, yeah, that's realized through the two IDs. And you have to assign city GML specific geometry and feature roles through the geometry trait setter. So for example, just create an attribute called city GML LOD name and to have, you have to assign um, an LOD2 multi-surface, for example, um, and the role to declare that that roof surface um, yeah, has a special city GML geometry. We will see it um, in my demonstration later on. So that's a, just a screenshot um, showing how to, um, how to transform a 3D uh, shapefile into a city GML model. We have to split up different um, types of surfaces, some special modeling, and some special um, modeling about the uh, yeah, city GML um, relevant or specific geometry and feature role.
So I have two um, demonstrations prepared. Um, one is uh, about creating a very simple building from scratch, so just, uh, just to show how it works. And the second one, where I transform a 2D shape and an AutoCAD model into an LOD 1, 2, CTGML model using custom transformers. So let's start Workbench. And as I mentioned before, just an easy introduction um, example. We have just created a polygon, extruded in a certain height. So if you have uh, buildings, you have a footprint, and you have a high uh, an attribute um, holding the height of the building, and just expand or extrude it. Um, so next step will be create the special city GML attribute, which uh, says what type of geometry um, this building has. So it's called LOD1 solid. Just take it into the geometry trade setter and assign um, this information to the geometry. We can have a short run on it. Hopefully it works. It should. Just opening city GML viewer. And we have a simple building here. I think that's the right one. Hopefully, yes. Just a very simple building. So a step further will be to have um, another entity to have um, a so-called building part. So it's a building made of two parts and uh, just create another polygon, extrude it, and now I have to, again, have to, uh, uh, have to assign the special geometry, again, LOD1 solid, and I have to design or to create um, an attribute uh, called uh, CTGML feature role, uh, which, uh, which, which says that um, this building part, uh, sorry, that that building consists of building parts, so there's a role assigned to that feature type, to, or to the geometry. And again, geometry trades, it's a trade setter to assign the information to the geometry. We have a further run. Can reload it. So we have two parts, um, one main part and the building part as a second um, entity. So let's have a look on a second example, which is a bit more complex. No, don't have to. So here we have um, two data sources, um, or source data sets. One is a 2D shape, like footprints from the buildings with and somewhere where there might be an attribute um, which defines the height of the building. And the second one is a bit more complex AutoCAD model, which is already in 3D. So with the roof and walls defined and some um, special um, building installations. So maybe we can adjust we, we want to see the, the result of a process. So the first step is quite easy, just calculating the height of the building through attributes, um, and then um, assigning the CTGML specific um, information. And this is done uh, through a uh, yeah, custom transformer, a little one, where you can first define the type. So you can choose if it's a building or a building part or a siding roof, a surface, and so on. And depending on what you choose here, you have to um, assign further parameters. So a building can, for example, be uh, an LOD1 solid. Yes. Then um, maybe the second part where we, um, where I um, yeah, took the AutoCAD model to, um, to CityGML. Again, we have to split up um, the different types which are coming from the AutoCAD model. So, for example, a piece of wall, a, piece, uh, a special piece of wall, and so on. And again, we have to create this special city GML information. So we have a wall surface. We um, just have to define if there's a relationship, so it's called the bounded by relationship. We have, to, yes, uh, we have just to say yes. And we have to choose the geometry. For example, we choose uh, LOD2 multi-surface. 
And uh, last part of this, pro uh, of this process is assigning addresses to um, all the buildings. So um, there's a uh, schema, it's known as uh, extensible, extensible um, address uh, language called uh, short name XAL address. And uh, I just implemented it a little, um, yes, uh, tra custom transformer which uh, assign um, attributes to, to um, this um, yeah, special XAL address schema. And maybe we can just run it through. First, we have a look on it again with the city GML viewer. So here can, you can see that you can switch between LOD1 and LOD2. Just zoom in a little bit more. So just switch off LOD1. You have only the LOD2 model. Switch off LOD2, switch on LOD1. You have the um, LOD1 model and you can select one of the objects. One will be enough. Yeah, show in properties and you see all the attributes um, which are defined. And for example, if there's an address, there's no address I think, so we have to choose another building. So where are the addresses? They should be there. Yeah, here you have assigned addresses um, to that building. So as the last step, maybe we can load into the new data inspector. Just building LOD1, LOD2. Takes a couple of seconds. Here it is, switching to 3D, switching off the LOD1 building, buildings, and um, just selecting one object. And here you can see the special geometry traits defined in the workspace, city GML level of detail, city GML LOD uh, and LOD <coughs> name. So, I think that's all. Um, I think that's a very basic um, city GML model, but um, at the moment that's uh, um, that's that's uh, yes, that's what our customers want to do. Just uh, picking up uh, two uh, fruit pr uh, fruit prints from buildings, extrude them, and put them into a city GML model. So that's all. Thank you. <laughs>